Wow, this video is long overdue. Hey guys, it's Nikki here. And um, yeah, as you can see from the title, you could probably guess why I'm doing this video. It is a very long overdue video and I felt that it is time that I give an explanation to my YouTube subscribers on exactly why Nikki disappeared for the last three years. Now you're probably wondering, hmm, did she go to jail? Did she get hit by a car? Mind you, there was actually some people, I've been peeping on the comments. I know Nikki in real life, she got hit by a car and she died. Oh yeah, Nikki, mm, she finally got arrested for animal abuse and she's in jail now. Eh, inaccurate. So what happened to Snazzy Nikki for the past three years? I believe the very last video that I left off with was one of the green tree monitor feeding videos or just something, just something without an explanation. You're probably all wondering. No, wow, how could she do us like that? You're right. I'm sorry, I do apologize. I did, however, write a description um, on my Facebook page on me going away for a while. I was away much longer than I anticipated that I wanted to, but unfortunately, to circumstances, I didn't feel that it was the right time for me to come back. Now, Let's get to the story. Why did Nikki disappear for three years? Shortly after I uploaded my last video, um, due to some, I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but due to some family health situation concerns, um, I was incapable of keeping the rehabilitation animals that I had. I, right now, live in Canada. Canada, and for those of you wondering as well, I was born here in Canada, so this is kind of my second home, pretty much. Um, however, the animals that I did have that you guys have been seeing on my YouTube for the past years, those animals are still back in Hong Kong. Why did Nikki move to Canada? Mm. Good question. I moved to Canada because of university. I have been here in Canada for about a year now, but for the first two years, I was actually in Boston, Massachusetts. I was studying pre-med there, uh, in majoring in biology, ready for going into vet school. To be, to be completely honest, paying as an international student in America, it is quite hard with health insurance. Here in Canada, I get free health care. I pay as a citizen. Everybody wins. I am here now in Canada. I was in Boston for two years. Uh, the rehabilitation animals have all been rehomed from three years, old, three years ago. And um, don't worry, you know me. I do my procedures properly. I make sure they are made, gone into good, proper cared homes. The truth is, I do not, I definitely do not own as much uh, reptiles as I used to. I believe that right now at home in Hong Kong, I still have three ball pythons. I have my tigu, kimchi. I have my dog, Moby. Um, I now have a cat in the company for my dog, Moby. Moby is turning 14, by the way, so he's getting really old. Now that they're getting along together, I've noticed that it really, really helped the behavior with Moby. Like, he used to be so upset. Imagine you being a dog, and the only dog your whole entire life. Mind you, Papillons have a very, very independent personality. So they are kind of a little bit of a mood swing from time to time, at least Moby is. And especially since he's getting old, his temper got cataracts in both of his eyes. Um, his joints are nice and healthy though, so that's good, and his main health is very good, but he is blind and kind of deaf, so that's that. And ever since we got a kitty, Ragdoll Kitten, his name is Prince. Uh, Prince is around one years old, one and a half years old, almost, and um, they get along together very, very well. They play with each other every single day. And I noticed Moby's life is just much more happier and he's just 
more energetic and it's really really great to see him that way I'm really happy into it I still have my turtle my musk turtle I've had that guy for geez I've had him since I was like 10 so it's been it's been 12 years so the turtle is still growing strong I do still have my two parrots, my Senegal parrot Lucky and my Eclectus female named Safira. So I still do have them at home. And if anyone's wondering, um, my reptiles in Hong Kong are being taken care of by my lovely, lovely mother and also my wonderful, wonderful maid. She, she came into our house uh with no fear of reptiles whatsoever she's like Psh, i see them in the philippines all the time she had no fear of reptiles whatsoever and whenever i did feed my reptiles before i left for university she would always be there watching and learning about how to take care of them can i just want to say i love janet so much i really do she is she is the best person in the world so much love so much patience to help me take care of them she spends time she gives an effort to really really make sure that they're in the proper care uh during my exams actually during the exact exam period um i i got a call from my mom saying that akira and for those of you who have been subscribed to me for a long time, you would all know Akira. Akira is my very, very first reptile that I've ever owned. In terms of a proper, proper reptile, Akira was my first. She is a bearded dragon. I got her, well, my grandma got her for me when I was 13. The story behind Akira was, um, I've been begging my parents for reptiles since I was five, six years old. And of course, they just never allowed it. It's just, that is absurd. A snake? No. My dad also had a serious, serious phobia towards reptiles. Uh, something happened in his childhood and he's just terrified of it. So then he just never was able to accept it. But one day, my grandma t knew that I really liked bearded dragons and she told me to bring her to a reptile shop to go take a look at it. So I took my grandma there, showed her, the exact bearded dragon that I liked, a beautiful, beautiful little sandfire juvenile that was in the cage. I loved her. Her colors were orange, really nice, fired up colors. Loved her. She was so tamed and docile. Picked her up. I showed it to my grandma. My grandma just turned around to the guy and was like, We're taking her home. I said to my grandma, I was like, What are you doing? My dad's gonna kill me. I said, You know what? I'm the elder. I'm the boss. If he's got a problem with me, he could come talk to me. And so since my dad has the phobia for the reptiles, um, I was never really able to keep them until my grandma gave me Akira. Akira means everything to me. And uh, sadly, during my exams last year, before summer, I got a call from my mom and she said that Akira got really, really sick. And so even before I finished my exams i asked her to take her to the vet immediately mind you in hong kong there are very very limited reptile vets um there are some that say that they do take care of reptiles but it's it's a very broad term to use and they are not specialized in reptiles so we did try to uh, my mom did try to take her to the vet turns out she had an organ failure um due to what we 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 still don't know the vets don't even know um and it it really it really broke my heart hearing that but then you know by the end of the day it, some of these things are out of our control an organ failure could be due to a lot of many things and akira was she was she was reaching almost 10 years old she was nine years old so she's 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 been around for a while and so I, you know, I, I am very, very sad that she's gone. Uh, we got her cremated. We had a funeral for her. I normally don't do that for any other reptiles, but for her, she mean she meant everything to me. She is why I'm here today on this day, and she helped me grow so much within learning for animals and same people in Hong Kong. You know, they a lot of people knew her. She was like my mascot. She was she was my logo. And it, it was really sad. I, I still get sad thinking about it now. So rest in peace, Akira. You know, mama loves you always. 
and uh, so that is what happens with Akira. That is one sad thing that happened, but majority of the other animals, yep, they're happily rehomed with their new owners, and I could not ask for more. Um, so, so un unfortunately, you know, due to forensic education for my family's health, um, it was a very hard decision for me to to be apart, away from what I love doing. But you know, life happens. I'm still super, super young, so I have time. I definitely have time. I still have the energy in me. I still have the passion and the love in me. And I am going to continue on doing it while I have to get my education done at the same time. But stick with me, guys. We are going to get through this together. And um, yeah, I brought home Akira. And that is how everything started. My very first reptile video that I had on YouTube up was of Akira eating mealworms. Now, mind you... I had no intentions on starting this whole YouTube channel. I I had no intentions on blowing it up or doing that. I, I simply uploaded a video of Akira eating mealworms to share with my friends. That was pretty much it. But hey, I guess I am a lucky person. I am so fortunate to have all of you guys always supporting me, always watching my videos. I, I love you guys so much. I love the fact that so many of you still stuck with me. Even though I disappeared, and it was my bad, I disappeared for three years. And you guys stay, still stay loyal to me. I appreciate that so much. I just want to say that out there. I love you guys. Thank you so much. There are some times where situations arise. And when I mean situations, I mean life. When life hits you in your face and there are just some things that you have to change for the better for everyone. I felt that it was really selfish. It would have been very selfish for me to keep a lot of my animals that I had, but I ended up rehoming them to very good homes. Some of them did go to my friends, friends who have been working with, for, with reptiles for over seven years as well much older than me. These are very experienced people, so don't worry. Trust me, it does pain me to be torn away from my passion, even though it was my own decision, to be torn away from my passion. It was a very hard thing for me to do. And I know I miss these animals, and I know, you know, being away from them, and it is sad as a keeper, as a caretaker, to say goodbye to the animals that you've been taking care of for so long and having a bond with. But, you know, it was very, it would have been very selfish of me to have kept them around, even though I was not able to be there. And even though my family member was so sick that it would have done her a lot more harm to keep the reptiles at home. That would, that would have been very unfair for me. Oh, you guys are probably wondering, so why did you not move your animals to Boston? But I lived in a dorm because, you know, first year being in university, I wanted to make friends. I lived in a dorm. Plus the way that the campus was, it was a very, it was a very small medical private university. And um, to be able to, to live off campus, it was, it, you would have to drive at least half an hour to get there and I, I, I was not about, I was not about that life. For two years in Boston, there was no way that I could keep my reptiles in dorms. No way. I would get kicked out. I would get deported. So I stalled and stalled and stalled. Two years later, I said, oh God, everybody on YouTube probably thought that I'm dead. Everybody thinks that I probably just ditched everyone. Not with intentions. Not with intentions, I promise you. I got offered to go to a university here in Canada, a very good university. And so I decided to transfer here instead. Again, my very first year. And mind you, I did think about moving out for, was living off campus for my first year here in Canada. But then I thought again, I'm not going to be able to make close friends that way, especially with the size of the classes here. It would have been quite hard. So, I decided to live in dorm again for the third time for my first year here in Canada. Again, no animals allowed. Three years later, two years in Boston, one year here in Canada, and here I am 
my second year in Canada. Welcome to my home. For those of you who have seen my video with my German Shepherd, we have a huge backyard for him to run around. Uh, we got a lot of things. We have a huge insulated garage where we can keep other things, even though right now it's being used as a poker room. I do have uh, one or two other things here. Slowly building it up. It has been around two months since I moved in and um, you know moving in it's it's settling down and everything it is quite a procedure uh, having to set everything up having to do everything else so the big question here two big questions one that I answered where did Nikki go for the past three years second question will Nikki come back with animal videos the answer is yes yes to an extent I will be continuing my reptile videos. It's very hard to find. I do not live in a city, in a busy, busy city. I do not live in Toronto, by the way, just so you guys are wondering. I do not live in Toronto. So I am in Ontario, but I do not live in Toronto. So I don't think I will get the chance to take in a lot of rehabilitation animals. Uh, if they do come my way, of course, I am always prepared, ready to do anything possible for them. Um, I do want to keep um, a few reptiles, not too much, just so I, just because I feel that, you know, I should take it slow. Definitely, I do have my studies going on as well. I do want to take it slow, but in terms of any kinds of videos, video rec recommendations that you guys have, um, answer uh, questions and answers. Or if you guys have any suggestions on any other type of videos, you know, please let me know. Please, please comment, message me, anything. Let me know what you guys want to see and I will always do my best to deliver it for you. I will do a video um, to show... I will do a video to show exactly what I have here. Um, right now in a later on video, but I will save that for another video because we are... This video is getting really, really long. I apologize I really do but you know it was story time and I just wanted to thank you all for all your support for staying with me um, I really can't thank you guys enough I really can't and I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate it I really it's <sighs> oh, I have an announcement to make um, I will be at least I will try my best to be but I most likely will be attending to Chicago Tinley Parks Reptile Expo with my mentor's son. So we will be there Saturday, October October 7th, I believe. That is the correct date for Chicago Tinley Park. We will be attending to that Reptile Expo. We will be helping out with some stalls. We will be mainly picking out some reptiles to bring back to Hong Kong. And, um, you know, if anyone's going to go, please let me know. Please message me. And uh, maybe you guys get to see me there in real life. And on top of that, I will try my best to also attend the Toronto uh, Downsville Park Reptile Show on October 22nd as well. I will try my best to attend that. If anyone is going, please let me know. That would be really cool to meet you guys. I'll definitely be doing the videos, so watch out. I will be uploading some Reptile Expo videos soon. So anyways, guys, I'm sorry for the long video. So sorry. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you guys have a nice day. If you have any, um, questions please feel free to comment below if you guys uh actually i'm thinking of doing a my next video soon on a faq on diamond my german shepherd so if you guys have any questions please comment down below and i will try to answer them anyways guys this is the end of this video the mystery is solved that is what happened to me for the past three years thank you guys for sticking with me throughout all this time again and i hope you guys have a wonderful day bye